I'm using alder for this project mostly because I have an abundance of it here in the shop but also it's really lightweight wood which should work out well for it being a mobile desk because you really wouldn't want something heavy to have to move around all the time. I'm going to cut these pieces into about 13 inch lengths and then I'm going to rip them at the table saw at one inch wide strips. I'm going to glue these pieces up much like you would an edge grain cutting board and I'm going to glue it into two blanks. You'll see why in the next step. After taking the two panels out of the clamps, I ran both of them through the planer a couple of light passes on both sides just to get the surfaces back even again. So the reason why I glued this up in two panels is because I needed to be able to inset the mouse pad into the top just like that and I figured the best way to do that would be to just have it in two panels like I did and set up my dado stack and my table saw and clean out an area so that the mouse pad would inset into it. Now I cut it a little bit deep, but I figure by the time I plane this thing down to thickness, uh, to the thickness that I want it to be, it'll be just about even with the mouse pad. I made a slight goof up whenever I was cutting the recess for the mouse pad but luckily I had an extra piece of the darker colored wood that I'd cut before I was able to put in the center when I glued the panel back up as one piece. After unclamping the panel for the second time I'm going to run it back to the planer again to get all the surfaces even and bring it all down to its final thickness. After a final sanding, the mouse pad should have a nice flush fit to the top. I'm now going to cut both ends of the board flush with my crosscut sled.
So part of the function of this mobile desk are the holes in the top that allow for cooling as well as cord access for the laptop or other electronics that you might have on it. I've already laid out a grid for the holes and I've got a temporary fence set up here to help keep all the holes in a line. I have the depth of my drill press set to where only the point of the Forstner bit will go through and then I can flip it over to the other side and finish drilling the hole as to try to prevent as much tear out as possible. One of the last major hurdles in this build is to cut a slot in the back of the top for your, your iPad or your, your iPhone or tablet or whatever it may be to be able to stand up and see it and also have a charging port in the center. The groove is five and a half inches long by half an inch wide. I've got a quarter inch router bit, um, an upcut bit in my router that I'm gonna use that I'll, I'll make two passes to make the groove. And being that I don't currently have a, um, a router edge guide, I've got my T-square here set up to guide the router to make the cuts with. I'm going to cut a small provision in the center of the groove to be able to feed the charge cable up to the bottom. The last step before installing the mouse pad is to give it a good sanding, radius the corners, and a quick finish with some spray lacquer. Finally, it's time to glue the mouse pad on. For this, I use contact cement, which I brush two coats on each piece, letting the glue dry in between. And once it became dry and tacky, as the directions say, I laid some sticks on the board to try and prevent the mouse pad from sticking before I wanted it to, but it didn't really work as well as I thought it would. I mostly just had to end up moving them out of the way because it was such a small piece and tried my best to get the mouse pad flush to each edge and in the corner good before sticking it in place. And then I just used one of the pieces of scrap wood to try and press it down onto the board good. Once I was sure the glue had set pretty good, I used a sharp razor blade and trimmed off the excess. So this project was a lot of fun to build. It's completely adaptable to whatever kind of wood you want to use. You could use something completely different from the alder that I used. And it's also, I mean, as far as size goes, you can change it up. You can make it smaller or bigger or just whatever you need to fit your needs. As always, for more details on this build as well as other builds, you can check out our website at lanebrotherswoodshop.com. That's pretty much it for this time, guys. Happy trails. Thanks for watching.